you. All right, so this is my first uh, visionary women's meeting. I, I know you're surprised. Um, <laughs> but actually, you know, it gave me a chance to learn about the organization as well, and it really is a wonderful organization. I'm, a, I'm actually a water buffalo in town. We do very similar things. Um, we support um, the indigent children in Los Angeles, and actually Visionary Women uh, has decided to give us a little bit of support. We do, uh, you know, some of the activities are for um, young ladies who are indigent, who, you know, we want to get them to be able to apply to college and so forth, and it's so nice and generous that you included uh, us. Um, so one of the other things I did notice that uh, the cards that you have for this one are pink, so I feel very welcome. Um, there was blue downstairs, but I'm pink, and so I'm, I'm, that really broke the ice for me, and I, I feel really good. So, um, so I do work at UCLA, and my area of interest is uh, in personal finance. So I've actually done some work with uh, Merrill Lynch and some of their programs um, in training people how to make good investment decisions. Um, now, when you think about launching a business, that is an investment decision. And so, um, you know, we're going to talk today, and it is going to be interactive. So you're going to be participating. Uh, I'm not going to drone on for 45 minutes here. We're actually going to talk together. Um, and so, first of all, has anybody contemplated starting a, a new business, like in the near future? Okay, so quite a few people, okay? And so, um, so what types of businesses, like for instance, what kind of business have you thought about? Something in the beauty industry. Beauty industry, okay. Um, it's a press on brand, which I'm wearing right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Real estate. Real estate, okay. Fertility. Fertility. Uh, what, what do you mean by fertility? Like a clinic or? No, it could be a fertility, fertility lifestyle brand. Ah, okay. Gr great. Uh, you guys? Clothing and fashion? Fashion technology. Fashion technology. What does that involve? Like, uh, 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 intersection, I call it mid commerce. They're mobile, social, uh, personalized experience. Great. Another one? I do custom bridal and engineering. Cool. Great. Others? Political talk show. A political talk show. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, real estate technology. Real estate technology. Educational psychology testing center. Wow. What is it? Edible skin care. Edible skincare. Okay. Don't know much about that. So, you know, I, uh, but, you know, uh, yes. Accessories. Okay. All right. So we're all sort of thinking about this. And, you know, when you think about starting a business, you have in mind, okay, I've got this really cool product and I have this idea and people should really love it. Okay. And that's probably true. And one of the big, you know, big things that distinguish sort of success from failure is having good planning, okay? And so a lot of what we're going to talk about today is, you know, what does the planning process look like? What are some key issues? Obviously, in just a half an hour, 40 minutes, we can't hit everything. But what I want to do is kind of, kind of we'll run through sort of how, you know, we think about some of the big issues. Um, and then we'll choose one of these, and we'll sort of go to the easel and sort of think it through strategically together. And, you know, it, it, people, you know, can see how this actually works. Now, these slides are available. So if you're interested in my slides, you can have a copy of my slides. Uh, Visionary Women can, can give it out. Okay, these aren't proprietary. Okay, so that, of course, is a a while ago, okay. Um, okay, so with that, that was not planning ahead. Okay, I'd like to advance the slide. Let's try. Okay, all right. So planning is going to be very crucial. And so we all, when we think about our business, we all have sort of a core idea. Now, writing this core idea down is going to be important because you know, it's not just about, you know, um, you, you know a, a particular, you know, it's not just real estate. But what kind of real estate are we in? Uh, where are we thinking of locating? What are we thinking? Why, why is it that we 
think we can do something that other people can't do. And so sitting down and thinking about the core idea is the first step. Now, of course, the products and services that you're going to offer is the second step. And so if you think about, OK, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be offering accessories. Okay, so I, I have accessories. What types of accessories? Who am I really targeting? What clientele am I targeting? If I do succeed in accessories, what else might I also sell? What would complement those accessories? And you know, if, perhaps if I start to produce really well, what kind of services could I offer in addition to just the products? You know, am I going to do this online? Is this going to be brick and mortar? Is it going to be a mixture? To, to sit down and really think about you know, not just the first idea, but expand it and let your mind wander and put this all to pen and paper. Okay? Now, we're going to talk about the marketing of this in some detail. And the marketing isn't just going to be advertising. We're not just talking about advertising, like how do we go out and advertise what we're doing. The marketing is going to be a strategy. Okay? And the strategy is going to involve, you know, at a deep level, some sort of game theory. But we're not going to do game theory. But we are go there's going to be some brinkmanship that goes on when we st think about how do we bring this product to market. Okay? And so we're going to spend some time uh, on the marketing. We're also going to spend some time on the financing, okay? because financial planning, when you start your business, is going to be key so that you remain solvent and you get an idea of what kind of return you're getting and that you can basically stay alive okay, as you start this. And you can, put a, you can get an idea of how much money do you really need, what sources of money are we going to be using, what if we get into trouble? How are we going to keep funding this? And so we're going to, the marketing and the financing are the things that we're really going to focus on. Now, of course, there's going to be ownership and decision making. So, you know, you're, a lot of you may be thinking, well, we're going to own this ourselves, so we're the decision maker. Okay? But you may have partners. And if you finance this, by borrowing from other people or having co-investors, that may also determine the decision making and ownership that takes place. And so that needs to be planned ahead. Who's going to be your partner? How are you going to partner up with people? Okay. And of course, who's going to run all of this? I mean, sometimes it really just takes sweat equity to get things ro rolling. Um, sometimes, I mean, let's suppose I went out and I bought a whiskey bar. I'm not exactly going to be there at 2 in the morning every single day, so I have to be able to trust somebody not to take cash out of the cash register. How, how am I going to run this thing? How are operations going to proceed? Who can I rely on to do this? Okay? And so by setting up the planning of this, you can make milestones. Here's a timeline of how we're going to get to these different things. Here are projections that we're going to make. And now you have a series of milestones. And, and periodically, you can say, well, where are we? Okay. And so what this really builds on is that you really want to write a business plan. Okay. No matter what you're doing, whether it's a political talk show, whether it's a real estate venture, whether it's any sort of fashion products, writing this down on paper means everything. Because it forces you to discipline the mind to think of all these things up front. Moreover, the business plan is going to allow you to reference back and say, OK, I, I've, I see where I've been. I didn't quite do this. I didn't quite get that. But now, how are we going to adjust that plan? And it helps you not forget anything. Now, one, of the, one really nice source that I think is really practical, it's easy to, to use, is the Ernst & Young Business Plan Guide. And so if you're thinking about starting a business, work, reading through that business plan guide ha will help you not to forget a lot of these things. Okay? And so you'd be surprised. A lot of entrepreneurs just kind of start business. They just start out. They start their business in the garage. They just 
get a place to, you know, they get a spot, they sign a lease, they just start. And a lot of businesses can do quite well. But you can imagine that you're taking a lot more risk because you can stumble and fall at different places where you could have predicted problems ahead of time. Okay? And so writing the business plan is going to be really important. Okay. Now, I want to talk a little bit about competitiveness. Okay? And so this is part of the marketing piece that, you know, that we, we need to talk about. And so there's this classic model called the five forces model. Okay? And of course, it's really small because the, the technology here. I'm sorry that this is small for maybe some people in the back. I, I might not be able to see this. Okay? But I'm gonna, I'll tell you what this is. And so this is a, a disciplined way of thinking about your business. Okay? So first of all, you have to think about your industry rivalry. Who else is doing this too? If I'm going to start a perfume company, who else is doing this? What could they do to hurt me as I start? Okay, that's the thing that you, anybody who's going to enter into the business, has. it's like you're entering into the game. Okay? And somebody's waiting there just to knock you out. Okay? That's what their job is to do. They're protecting their turf. Okay? And so how are you going to weasel your way into the game? And so could somebody mimic you? Could they do what you're doing? And, be, and do they have the ability to just sort of copy your technology or do it in a different way or offer a similar product? Who is out there who could do this to you? Okay. Now, if you do well, let's suppose that you lock out and you start a new, a new business, say this political talk show, something, well, now other people go, aha, that, that can be done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it too. So you have the threat of new entry, not just of the incumbents who are trying to push you out, but it's the next entrance, and you're the incumbent, you've got to keep them out. Okay, and so it's like a, it's like a tug of war. You can imagine, like it's like a game, you know, like a, a board game that you would play at home, how are you going to win that game? How are you going to be able to enter and be sustainable? Okay? And so part of your thinking up front is going to be how this is done. Now, the bargaining power of your buyers and the bargaining power of your sellers is very, your suppliers is very important because there's, a, there's an idea. Let's talk about the suppliers first. There's an idea of, okay, we're going to try to create value. We're going to start our business and create value. But now, if your suppliers know that you're creating lots of value and you need their inputs to whatever you're doing, well, they can just raise the prices. Okay, and what are you going to do about it? Not much you can do. And so, especially in something like, say, we're making the perfume, we need materials and so forth, how are we going to source those, and who can we source them from? The best way to do it is where you're sourcing materials that lots of people can offer you. Because if you get to buy their inputs, you have bargaining power. You can get them cheap. If there's only one person who provides a key input, well, you don't have much bargaining power. So even though you might be successful in starting what you do, they, because they have the bargaining power, they can take some of the, thing, some of the you know, value that you've created. Okay? And so thinking ahead, you have to think about, well, you know, who am I going to source this from, and whatever it is, and how am I going to strategically protect myself from being held up by people who are supplying to me? Okay, whatever the, whatever the input may be. Now, the buyers are the same. I mean, you all probably, probably are pretty good negotiators, right? Well, if, you, if, a, if the buyer can choose your product or your product, well, they have a lot of bargaining power. They can say, I want it cheap. And if you say no, they go, OK, buy, and they buy from somebody else. So understanding who your clientele is and how much they need the product is really important. 
And so this five forces model is a way of sort of organizing your mind around what you're producing. So you go from a core idea, um, these were nails that yeah. you were, yeah, yeah, those nails, okay, which is, it's cool, right? It's a cool thing to produce, or the edible skin care, okay, which sounds cool as well, okay? But now you go to, well, who else, how do we stretch, how are we gonna play this game out there? Because that's what we're doing, is we're jumping into a game, okay? Now the other sort of way we think about this is we do what's called SWOT analysis, okay? And so SWOT analysis, it stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So another way to sort of think through our marketing decisions is to think, well, okay, so why is it that my nails are gonna be the best nails out there, okay? Is it that I can produce them at a really low cost? Is it that they look better than anybody else's? Okay, are they stronger and they last longer? I mean, you, you come up with these various strengths, that's what you bring, okay? Now, a strength could be a product strength. It could also be a management strength. Maybe you're better at managing a business than other people. Maybe you have connections overseas to get production better than other people. So it could be, it, it isn't just about the product, it can be about your own human capital. How good are you at doing this? Do you have access to financing that other people don't have? So there's strengths. Now, of course, you also have weaknesses. Identifying where your weaknesses are is even more important because those are the, those are the things that need to be solved ahead of time, and that may involve partnership. Okay, and so now, of course, there are opportunities that you're gonna have Let's suppose we start succeeding. Now there's further opportunities we're gonna to have to enter more markets, to expand what we do, et cetera. But then there's also these threats that could come in by duplication or by other people producing similar things and diluting what we're doing in the market. And so this is just another way of thinking about this. And these two kind of models allow us to think through where this is not, okay, allow us to think through like everything, but you do that up front. Now, as time goes on, you will continue to think about this. And so these will help discipline your thinking as time goes on. But planning ahead with this is really important. And of course, if we, you know, as we've been discussing, you know, are we, who are we displacing when we enter this? Who could displace us? Are there substitutes? Um, pricing is really important. Pricing strategy is immensely important. You may come in with your nails and say, I can do this cheaper than anybody. I'm coming in cheap, okay? I'm gonna sell a ton of nails, okay? And you sell a ton of nails at a cheap price, all of a sudden, you have huge demand. Maybe you do that to knock other people out of the market. Once you knock other people out of the market, then you plan on raising your price, okay? And so how do you price things strategically? Maybe you bundle certain things. Maybe you make a couple of products. Maybe you sell the nails and nail polish and you give the nails away cheap and you gouge on the nail polish, okay? And so you bundle things together. There's all kinds of pricing strategies that take place that are going to guide you to how successful you're gonna be. Of course, location is gonna be important too. How are we gonna locate? If it's a website type situation that has its own location <coughs> issues as opposed to brick and mortar. Um, you know, we talked about copying, people copying us. And of course, if we start well, how do we grow? One of the biggest things that entrepreneurs face is they have an initial success and then they, all of a sudden, they're like, well, now how do we scale this up? How do we increase our volume? We're gonna have to hire more people, have more like production, we need more location. Like, how do we do this? And so thinking about this up front is actually really helpful because it provides, again, a plan for how you're going to get from your initial idea 
that's really cool to something that's a great business. Okay? Now, now the money. Okay? The money is really important. And so sitting down and forecasting your revenue that you expect to get from this is, is, is key. Okay? So it's not just how much of this are we going to sell and at, and at what price. When do we expect the demand to happen? Are we going to start selling in three months? Is this going to take us a year to do? You know, how long is it going to take for us to start getting things rolling? Okay? And so when you do what's called a capital budget, you are literally creating a timeline from today into the future. You can go out five years, whatever makes sense. And you are determining, you're forecasting, what types of money will be coming in. Likewise, you're going to do the same thing with the cost of getting the goods to market, all of your overhead, everything that's required to get this business running and forecast it all. Now, we're not perfect forecasters. Okay? We have a crystal ball and we go, oh, I think I'll make this, I'll make that. Putting this down with our best guess is so important because it gives you an idea of how viable financially this is going to be. Now, you may need help in doing this. Okay? You may not be trained to do this. But there are lots of people, especially in Los Angeles, who know how to do this. And so maybe sitting down with somebody and getting someone to help you with a financial plan to forecast what you are going to be doing, that's going to be key. Now, the, there's something called liquidity. Okay? Liquidity refers to the ability to make your payments. Okay? And so if I have money, I have cash, and someone says, oh, we need to buy a new machine to make nails. Okay? You say, well, I've got that money. I'm liquid. Okay, I've got cash. But now, if you forecast, as you forecast things out, you'll be able to see, well, am I going to be liquid? Or am I going to, is, do I face some illiquidity? And so this forecasting process is going to be helpful in understanding, first of all, you know, what kind of money do I need to have on hand? in case the demand for my product isn't what I thought it would be, at least at first. Um, how much money do I actually need to get started? And what's the worst case scenario? What does it look like? Like if I, all of a sudden things fall apart, how do I stay alive? Okay, and to do some analysis where you're saying, well, what if we don't get demand until say two and a half years from now, but I've spent all this money and getting the nails and I've got a store. And I'm, how am I going to live through that startup period without cash? Okay? And so being kind of doing these forecasts by yourself or with someone else is going to be immensely helpful. Okay? Now finally, this is just a capital budget. I'm just giving you sort of a, I, I don't know how I'm doing on time. Uh, how much time have I? Oh, good. Perfect. Good. All right. So, so this is what a capital budget would look like. Obviously, you know, everybody, a lot, most people may be looking at it going, oh my God, those numbers look really small and this looks detailed and I don't like it and it's not cool, like I, I, I'm not happy doing this. I don't want to do this, okay? <laughs> but you can have somebody help you do this. But this is what it looks like, and you essentially say, okay, I'm going to start by buying a piece of real estate, okay? And, and I know you can't see this, but if you want the slides, it's going to cost me a certain amount of money. I need some equipment. I need some working capital, maybe some new in, some inventory, some things going on. Here's the sales that I expect to get. Here's the price that I'm going to charge. Here's how I think things are going to grow. This is a capital budget. And so as you do the planning, the business plan to set up your business, whatever it is, this is the type of stuff that you have to be aware of. Okay? And you may get help in this, but it's really important to, to, to do this type of a process. Now, the last thing is, how are you going to finance 
the new business. Okay? The most common way to finance a new business is with your own money. Okay? Go, I've got money in the bank. I'm just going to start my business. And for a lot of people, they do have that money, and that's, that's great. Okay? Now, of course, if you don't have that capital, you may need to take on partners okay, who get a piece of the action, or you may need to get access to loans. Okay? And so issuing equity, equity is like the stock market. When you own stock in the stock market, you actually have a piece of the company. If you issue equity when you're starting a business, that means that you've got a business partner. Okay? And so that may come from friends or other individuals. May come from angel investors, people who just have lots of cash and they would like to, you know, invest in something, uh, specifically in a garage somewhere that involves technology. Okay, you have venture capitalists. If you start to get bigger, and you start to scale up, you may be getting capital from them as well. Now, some of you, we've talked about people in here who are thinking about starting a business, but a lot of you may at some point in your lives be asked to be one of these people. Okay? And so you go, oh, I've got this friend who's got this neat idea. They're starting this, this new app that they're really excited about. Okay? And so you go, well, that's cool. Should I, should I buy some, a piece of the action of that company? Should I be an equity holder? Well, it goes back to this. Okay? What do they think is, what, what does their business plan look like? So this, I, this process of creating the business plan is not just for you who are starting a company, but it's also for you who are thinking about investing in a company. And so when someone comes to you with an idea but nothing, no analysis, no marketing, no competitive analysis, no financial projections, you've got to be really careful about that type of person. You need to see a business plan like this, which is going to give you why are we doing this, how are we going to protect ourselves, how are we going to ride things out. You know, if you're giving your money to this, you have to have these types of things. And financial projections are going to be important. And of course, having an some sort of advisor who looks at this and says, nah, this looks reasonable, or no, this is pie in the sky, okay, is going to be really helpful. But you may be one of these people who are actually giving your money to somebody who has a new idea. Okay, so there's a flip side. Now, of course, anybody who's starting a new business, if they go to the bank, the bank is not just going to say, oh, yeah, you want a half a million dollars? Yeah, no problem. Here you go. You know, you look nice. No, they want to see the business plan, too. They're going to want to see the financial projections. So any need for capital this planning process that, I'm that I've been talking about is going to be really important because the claimants, meaning the people who are investing in you, are going to want to see where their money is going and get an idea of what the hope looks like and whether this looks realistic. Okay? And in the end, this type of thing will determine who actually owns the business. Okay? And so maybe you have equity holders, you have partners, you have silent partners. Maybe they put in some of the sweat equity too. Okay? And so if we go back to you know, kind of the very beginning, you know, the planning is going to be crucial. We have our core idea. We have our products and services. We have various things that we have to think about. And so this is going to structure our thinking. So I was, a, I was a urologist doing kidney surgery and so forth. And I, I was like a real life Doogie Hauser actually. And so parentally driven to become a doctor, surgeon. I was a professor of surgery at Wash U. And I got my MBA at night because I was gonna be a, probably a chair of surgery by my late 30s. I was very, I was like 18, 19 when I went to medical school. And so, so I know what you're, I know what you're Okay. Now, of course, I found my true passion and what I really wanted to do, because the first one was parentally driven. This is actually me driven. Okay. <laughs> but the, um, the, when I was a physician, and I, I remember being asked, what investments should I be putting 
my money in in picking a retirement. And I would look at these different funds, and one said it made 4%, and one made 8%, and then there's one that's 35%. I'm like, hey, why wouldn't you do that? Okay, and so, you know, some people in here are thinking, why shouldn't I do that? Well, I mean, there's risk, right? But as a physician, I wasn't, I, I wasn't trained in medical school to think about these things, and it required e extra education. Okay, so now getting to your, the crux of your question about men versus women, I think that this organization could be you know, a launching point for small groups of women interested in entrepreneurial activities who get together and discuss what they're thinking about doing and confide in each other and, and, and provide support for each other. Um, I mean, that's what, that's what I would do. If I was, you know, was going to be an entrepreneur, I'd probably do that too. Uh, but this, this kind of organization, you have a lot of people here. I mean, look, we're all d discussing these things openly. Everybody in here is incredibly bright, I can already see, and has the prowess and, and the wherewithal to do it. Perhaps organizing something where you're sharing resources, sharing experiences, and working together, I think, makes a lot of sense. Okay, um, so that's what that's what I think. You know, I can't really comment on the difference between men and women. Um, I mean, I you know, I really can't comment I, on that. You know, and I'm being I'm being videoed. Okay, and so you know, this is this is not going to happen. Okay, but the the fact is is that it's not even it's you know when you are thinking about dipping your toe in the water to start to do things like this, it is very daunting. If I was to start a business, even though I have a lot of background, it would still be daunting to me to think about how we're going to do all of these things. Well, getting together with other people who have e these experiences, I think, is really good. And you know, a comfort in discussing this is important, too. And I think this is a great venue to sort of maybe form some small groups where pe the people are interested.